Hi, everyone. Welcome to tutorial 67 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the next few tutorials, I plan on actually introducing the basic concepts of machine learning. So in this tutorial, let's have a quick look at what it is. And as the name suggests, uh, a machine is learning. And it's learning because a human is teaching. So first of all, let's understand how a human learns so we can have a look at how machines learn and how we can train them. And uh, by the way, if you hear the term artificial intelligence, machine learning, they can be used interchangeably typically. But in my view, machine learning is the technology that you use to teach a machine so the machine can learn. And artificial intelligence is once the machine learns, the machine can be deployed to be artificially intelligent. Okay, that's why these terms can be uh, interchangeable sometimes. So how do humans learn? Let's use the example of a few uh, sports items. Yeah, most of us relate to hopefully some sort of a sport. And when I show this image, what comes to your mind right away? I bet bulk of you would immediately recognize this as a basketball. And this I think the entire world, maybe not in the US, but most of the world recognizes this as a uh, football or a soccer ball, right? Uh, again, easily recognizable. How do we know that? Because we have seen or we have played this as kids, okay? And we watched NBA on TV, so we know how a basketball looks like, even though you probably, uh, in some parts of the world, never ever held a, uh, a physical basketball in your hand. You definitely know how it looks like. Same with this. I think you should probably know what that is. Uh, it's again a uh, tennis ball because again, most of us have either played this at some point or watched like Wimbledon's or US Opens, uh, French Opens uh, and so on. And uh, this, I'm not sure how many of you know, the, obviously the viewers from US uh, would recognize this as a football or uh, you know American football. But uh, again, if you are not trained on this, if you don't know what this is, that means you aren't trained on it. Again, this is the core of, uh, of machine learning. If the machine is not trained, then it doesn't know what to do with it. it. It puts it into the wrong bin. In this case, you probably don't even know if you want to put that into the bin of ball because that's not round. Okay, so now let's look at this. Again, that looks, uh, 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 again, uh, probably, my viewers, you know, in India would recognize that right away. But especially if you're from uh, the Western world in Europe or uh, maybe not in UK, but in US, you may not recognize this, but that's a cricket ball. And again, if you have played cricket or if you watched it, then you would probably know what that is. Again, this the whole point I'm trying to make here is humans learn from past experiences. In the past, we have looked at each of these items, so we know what it is. If we haven't looked at it, we know that, well, it's roundish, so it must be a ball. Same thing like right here. What is this? Well, it looks like a nice squishy ball, but what is it? Well, this is a lacrosse ball. I don't know how many of you know what lacrosse is. Well, definitely in the US you probably do, but this is that. And some, if you have played this or if you have watched you know, lacrosse, you probably recognize that, oh, this is lacrosse right now. Now, sometimes you need some perspective, okay? You probably know what that is, but then if you look at that, what is it? I don't know, is that a lead ball? And it looks small, so it's uh, probably smaller than a cricket ball. So, so what is it? But as soon as we put some other thing in the context of this, you right away know that, okay, this is a ping pong ball or a table tennis ball, if you want to call it, yeah? Now, again, these are all how humans learn and machines are no different. They learn exactly the same way. When you provide a machine with only this image, it doesn't know what to do and it probably can put this in the category of this or some other uh, you know, type of a sport. But the moment you put this, another attribute uh, of this tennis uh, uh, you know, uh, racket, then, uh, or, or a bat, I don't know, what do you call a ping pong uh, bat? So the moment you put this, it automatically increases the confidence in predicting what this is. So this is how humans learn. Now let's get to the actual data, okay? So let's look at some data that's actually spread out in this way. And uh, you're told to put, uh, you know, fit this to a linear line so you can actually predict the behavior in future, right? This is machine learning. You're actually uh, giving some data 
And now we are trying to fit this to a line. So in future, if I get a new data point at 0 0.2, I can say that, okay, that corresponds to an output of 0 0.25 for a point uh, input of 0 0.2, right? Now the question is, is this a great line for this set of data? Or is this a great line for this set of data? I mean, they, they both, I think, are okay. But is that the right thing? Or if I put another line, the blue line that is going this way, is this a better line? So for humans, we are probably thinking about, okay, so if I go back, sorry, if I go back, if I just look at this, maybe this is not a great line. It kind of works for this data point and that data point, but uh, this one is too far away. I'm not comfortable. That one is too far away. And this one is horrible, right? I mean, it's, it's going this way. So these two data points are pretty far away from this line. So probably that's not good. And if you put this line, maybe this is a better compromise. So in our mind, we are going through this exercise of, is this, is this a nice fit? So machines learn exactly the same way, provided we teach it that way, okay? So uh, when it comes to machine learning, machine learning teaches systems the ability to automatically learn, okay? And improve from experience. So they learn in an automatic way and they improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. Well, uh, uh, we can actually program it saying that, okay, if this, then that, if this, then that, which, some of that exercise also form, uh, falls into machine learning, but typically they have the ability to automatically learn and uh, improve from experience. Now we give more data from experience, they improve. Okay, so this is what machine learning is. And it begins with data that's either labeled. We say that, hey, this is a tennis ball, this is a table tennis ball, and this is a lacrosse, and this is basketball, and so on. So that's labeled, meaning it's called supervised learning. Someone is supervising, someone is telling it what it is. Or unlabeled, it's called unsupervised learning. So what does unlabeled mean? If I gave you, uh, you know, a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of, uh, I don't know, M&Ms, candy, that are blue, green, and red, and you just say, sort them, what would you do as a human? They all have the same sh uh, uh, size and shape, so you would probably sort them as red, green, and blue. So that's what unsupervised is, you just give a bunch of data and say sort them into three groups. But if I give you red, green, and blue and I say sort them into two groups, what would you do? You'd be very confident about red and blue or green and then for the other one you'll probably put it in one bin or the other or distribute them. This is what machines actually do uh, if you do both supervised or unsupervised. Okay, And once the system learns whether it is supervised or unsupervised, once it learns now you have a trained model. This is literally a file that contains instructions on the training on how to predict future data. And that train model can be used to predict your future data. Uh, and, and what does that mean? That means you're enabling automation of data analysis. Why are you doing machine learning? So you can segment your future images by not painting every pixel. So you can sort your data. So you can take like a whole bunch of measurements. Okay, how much, uh, uh, what are the vitals in the blood test? And uh, is this a liver disease or not, right? I mean, you're trying to predict it by taking the assistance of this machine. So that's what uh, uh, you know the machine learning is, where you're automating part of the analysis tasks. And uh, typically the algorithms come into two broad categories. One is called regression and classification. What do we mean by that? If you look at regression, regression is the example I just showed you, fitting a line. Meaning, later on, when I get an X value, I can predict my Y value, and Y value can be anywhere continuous. It can be 2.5, 0 0.5, it can be 0 0.562. It doesn't matter. So this is a continuous value that we are predicting. That's what regression is. Regression is you're predicting the outcome, which can be a continuous value. Classification is you're predicting an outcome which is categorical, uh, in, uh, typically categorical, which means, is this a cat or a dog? Is this liver disease or not liver disease? Is this breast cancer or not breast cancer? Is this a nuclei or is this a mitochondria? Or uh, is this, uh, uh, you know, lysosomes? So these are all classifications. You're classifying them into individual categories. But if you're predicting an outcome, what is going to be the revenue in the next quarter, okay? So this is going to be a solid number 
well, with some uncertainty values, but that is regression, okay? So there are various regressions, uh, I mean, algorithms for each of this. As the name suggests, linear regression fits the data to linear, support vector machines, logistic regression, random forest, multilayer perceptrons, and convolutional neural networks can all be used for regression problems. Very similar algorithms can be used for classification, okay? Random forest, SVM, naive base, convolutional neural networks, and so on. And we'll go through some of these in the next uh, upcoming tutorials. And within classification, you further can actually look at the problems as binary classification, multi-class classification, multi-label, semantic, instance, there are many. Binary makes sense. Uh, it's binary. In fact, let's go ahead and look at some of these examples. Binary classification means, okay, here is malarial cell and uh, it's infected. And here is a malarial cell that's not infected. So here the decision is either infected or not infected. Obviously a binary decision. Is this, uh, uh, is this uh, good or bad? Yeah, is this uh, zero or one? So this is binary classification. It goes into one bin only, one or the other, that's it. Okay, so there are specific algorithms that actually does that. You have a whole bunch of images that show that, okay, these are a human, label them as infected, and a whole bunch of images where a human labels them as not infected. And then you can use these two bunches of images to train an algorithm to predict future images. Okay, so that's binary. Multi-class is very similar to binary, except instead of two, you have many classes, okay? You have an image right here. Is this nucleus? Is this mitochondria, ribosomes, lipids, lysosomes? Uh, which one is it? In this case, this is mitochondria. Only one is correct here. So this image can belong to only one of these classes. It's multi-class, but it belongs to only one class, okay? Multi-label uh, can be often confused with multi-class, but what multi-label is, you have, someone gives you an image uh, that looks like this, and they say, okay, put this into one of these bins. Which one would you put into? Uh, does it belong to nucleus? Yes, there is a nucleus right there, so it does belong to nucleus. Does it belong to mitochondria? Yes, I see a whole bunch of mitochondria. See, it also belongs to mitochondria. Of course, it also belongs to ribosomes. I see a whole bunch of them, so it belongs to all of these. I think an easy example for multi-label classification is, uh, you watch a movie that has, uh, and you want to classify that movie as uh, something. And you probably hear, oh, it's a romantic comedy. Well, it's got romance and comedy. It's got two labels, that movie. You know exactly what that's about. If you watch uh, 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 some, some of these Hollywood movies, you have action, adventure, and probably also romance and something else. So these are multi-label problems where you have like a specific a movie, but then they can belong to multiple classes or multiple labels, sorry. See, I, I even confuse them, uh, uh, you know, in my terminology. So these are all many classification challenges over there. Now in real life, it's probably a bit more complicated. Here is a, a reference to a very nice paper that I happened to read in the last uh, few weeks. And uh, this is our, as you can see, H and E stained image. And uh, uh, there are various stages to this workflow. Here you see something called semantic segmentation, where every pixel that show that belongs to nucleus is in red, and every pixel that's not nucleus is in blue. Blue doesn't mean anything. Red means something here. Red means nucleus, okay? And here, all the nuclei are circled, but then you see different nuclei in different types of uh, uh, shapes right there, okay? They're now predicting nuclear types. So this is not just classification or pixel classification, or this is uh, what they call instance segmentation. Okay, I know there are nuclei. I wanna segment each nuclei out and then classify it into something. So. Real life machine learning can be a combination of many of these uh, problems, okay? And uh, finally, how do machines learn, right? Let's get back to our data right there. So for linear regression, what does it do? For any machine learning, you first uh, try to identify what the loss function is, okay? and you're trying to minimize that loss function. What does that actually mean? Okay, you have all of these data points. Now, what do we do as humans? We are trying to put this line such a way that it's almost equidistant from all of these data points, which means it's agreeing with all of these data points to some extent, yeah? That's exactly what the algorithm does. It looks at, okay, for this point, if you call it x1, y1, and 
uh, where is this point supposed to lie? Actually, it should be on this line, right? Because we are fitting that line. So if this is on that line, so what? it's not on that line, which means what is the error? The error is y2 minus y1, this distance, right? That's my error, y2 minus y1. But if the point lies on the other side of this line, my error can be negative. If this is positive, the other side is negative. So we only take the magnitude of this error. How do we do that? We square it. Yeah. So you get the square magnitude of that error. And then you look at the mean of all of that, which means for this line, it's y2 minus y1 squared. For this data point, it can be y3 minus y2 squared, and then y4 minus y2 squared, and so on. You add all of these and then divide by how many points you have. This is what's called mean squared error. This is just a linear uh, regression example, but this gives you an idea of how machines learn. So it constantly changes these, these, uh, this, the position of the line to calculate this mean squared error. And the goal of this algorithm is to minimize this mean squared error, which would be a good compromise for all the data points. This is how machines learn. And this function is called a loss function. And every machine learning approach has some sort of a loss function that it monitors and minimizes. And then if it, if it uh, updates these values, but then the mean squared error goes up, and then the algorithm is like, oh, that's not the right direction. Let's go back in the other direction. And as long as it keeps going down the mean squared error, it continues. And uh, if it keeps going back up, it comes back down to where it was and so on until either it reaches a minimum or until uh, it, it runs out of the number of iterations. You say, oh, do that for 100 times. Even though it doesn't converge, it stops. Or do it for 10,000 times, but then it converges after like 500, it stops. So this is the uh, basic flow. So you start with data. You pre-process data, just like normalization that we talked in the last couple of tutorials. You pre-process the data and you define or extract features, okay, or attributes. And then you may have to normalize again, okay, after uh, extracting the features. But you define and extract features. And what do we mean by features? In our, uh, in our uh, uh, example, for example, going back to the sports analogy, okay, what is the color of this, uh, uh, you know, of this, uh, of this uh, basketball? Well, uh, it's whatever, it's, it's orangish. Well, it's probably a basketball, okay? If it is red, it's probably a cricket ball. If it is white, it's probably, you know, one of these two. If it's yellow, it's probably a tennis ball. So these are features, these are the attributes. You either define them or you extract them because if you only have an image of the basketball, you have to first get, okay, what is the color, right? You have to extract that feature. So that's the next step. And then you train the algorithm on the features by minimizing the loss, okay? In this case, the features, you know, you see the feature on the y-axis and, uh, you know, the prediction on the y-axis and x-axis, you have the feature number one. You can have many features, okay? And then you minimize the loss function to fit it. Okay, and then you track the metrics. What is the uh, validation after, you know, you you define your model, and finally you validate it, and then of course, if you are happy with it, you deploy it. Meaning, okay, now I have a model. Let's go ahead and use it on other data sets. So this is the structure of machine learning in general. Okay, so uh, again, things can be a bit uh, more complicated. Like if you go to deep learning and others, but then. Even in that case, in deep learning techniques, you start with data, you pre-process data, you extract the features, which is built into the deep learning process anyhow, and then you train it, you validate it, you deploy it. So the structure itself is very similar, no matter uh, uh, whether you're doing very simple linear regression or logistic regression or uh, deep learning or random forest or anything. So with this in mind, let's start looking at one of these in each of the next tutorials, starting with linear regression and then multiple linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machines, k-means. Let's look at the top five, six algorithms that are out there that people are still using. I'm not going to talk about some of the obsolete ones. They may be slightly relevant, but let's focus our time on the ones that solve real problems in the field of microscopy and image analysis. Thank you very much for uh, watching this tutorial. Let's uh, talk about linear regression in the next tutorial.